Whenever I talk about my favorite anime studios, usually the first to come to mind are Mad, Bones, KyoAni, or Trigger, but I hardly ever mention Gainax, even though they've made some of my favorite series of all time. And, uh, I mean, I guess it's obvious why. You know, why I mention the old washed up studio when you could talk about Trigger? Probably because what I've seen of Trigger is newer and nicer looking, but I just don't love as much as what I've seen from Gainax. And it's sort of hard to pinpoint exactly why, so I'll try to sort of throw out all of my emotions into this video and uh, maybe you guys can see what I think from each of the series that I'll be talking about from Gainax. Uh, and also, I'll be skipping over Panty and Stocking because even though I love it and I think it's really funny, it doesn't really go for what I'm going with structurally, and uh, according to this poll, none of you guys really care all that much, so uh, just watch the video. Well, where to start? Uh, probably the by far most popular of the three, Hideaki Anno's Neon Genesis Evangelion. A lot of people say that Evangelion is like the depression anime, which I would consider incorrect. I'd argue that it isn't really a cause of depression as much as it is a cure for depression. In Ava, we see the progression and character arcs of the three main mentally unstable silly billies. We have Misato, an alcoholic sex addict, Asuka, the bitchy bimbo who walks all over him, and Shinji, the kid who just can't get into a robot because he's a child, and he doesn't want to do anything because he doesn't want to face reality, and mechas aren't real. So, uh, Evangelion really tries to show the refusal of Kirby's epic return to dreamland, uh, which is split up into two ways, the final episodes of Evangelion and End of Ava. In the final episodes, we see Anno run out of funding and time slots, so uh, here's everyone just confronting their loneliness and depression. Straight up. Not even, like, n like, not the slightest bit of subtlety, it's just like straight up, not even capping. Uh, it's a little bit weird, but it gets the message across that you can find better hope for your life in your sad life which is even better shown with Shinji refusing Rei in End of Evangelion and letting the world die, only to choke out Asuka again. There is a way through depression, but it has to be through the darkness where you can find the light at the end of the tunnel. And as the internet does, it takes it completely the wrong way, bada bing, bada boom, the rest is history, Misato is best girl. Uh, I really love Evangelion for what it does, and how it basically spits in the viewer's face. As by far the most popular series by Gainax, Evangelion, I think, really encapsulates how this studio is different from others, and how in touch they are with the anime and otaku crowd and the average anime enjoyer. Also, uh, two things that are present in Trigger Studios. Now, I thought this is cool and all, but Eva isn't necessarily my favorite Gainax series. My heart was stolen by another certain mecha series about getting through life and breaking out on top. Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagan, while still not being my favorite Gainax series, is where I think the legend of Imaishu really began for plenty of reasons, uh, including but not limited to anime titties. If Evangelion is about forcing you to face reality and looking away from your dreams, TTGL is about making your dreams become your reality. The series can prove to the viewer that literally anything is possible by just believing in themselves and straight up giving it them all, and even if you fail, it's not the end of the world, and as completely useless as it seems, there's still hope. As hard as it is to believe, the world really has gotten better over time. Kamina shows the viewer how we can make progress by ignoring what we think is possible and breaking the mold. Rasyu shows how we can progress by learning from our past mistakes, and Simone shows us how we can believe in ourselves to believe in us. Gurren and Ava's contrast also interests me, because in Gurren, the way that the themes of the series are put on display are really over the top and kind of silly, but when given time to be analyzed, there are so many incredible ways that the themes are tightly sewn into every limb of the narrative compared to Ava, where you can just absolutely look into every single fine detail and break down every single scene frame by frame, uh, but come to the realization that sometimes it's not really as important to the creators as it means to you, and that's not a bad thing, that's not, that's not a bad thing in the slightest. But at the same time, Anno did say that the crosses that come out of the angels are there uh, because they look cool, which uh, sort of brings me to the third series I'll be talking about. <laughs> Uh, 
You know, Fully Cooly is a really interesting piece of work to me, not only because it's easily the most unique out of the series listed so far stylistically, but it also takes a much more unique approach to the themes that we've got over already. But before I go into this masterpiece, it's only six episodes, it's on Hulu and Adult Swim, the sub and dub are both really great, you don't have to watch the sequels unless you really want to, and it's way, way underrated on Mal, so please go watch it, I beg of you, it's only a couple hours. So anyway, back to the video. With a show that has dick jokes, weird animation changes, sick robot fights, and a hard to follow plot, you'd think that it wouldn't really be the deepest thing ever, right? Right. It's not. In fact, it's pretty silly, uh, obviously. However, what I do think is that it still pulls some sick shit. Similar to the other two series, Kazuya Tsuyumaki in Fully Kuli goes into the themes of coming of age. The key difference here being that the narrative isn't as important to follow as with the other two to keep up with the themes. In Ava, you have Nerve, in Gurren Lagann, you have the Anti-Spirals, and in Fully Kuli, you have Medical Mechanica. What is Medical Mechanica? That's a good question. It's, uh, it's something. It definitely has to do with, uh, Haruko and the aliens and the big ass iron flattening out the wrinkles in her brain. This is real, by the way. The narrative isn't really intended to be analyzed as much as the themes in themselves, unlike how incredibly Ava, but especially, especially Gurren Lagann, gets to intertwine those themes all through the story. What's also important to mention is that Gurren Lagann is pretty by the book's hero's journey as far as the plot goes, which allows the creative minds behind the project to experiment with more unique ways of implementing the themes into the series. Compare that to Evangelion, which has an extremely difficult to follow plot on first viewing, and it gets a little bit better with the next couple, so the themes don't really take the forefront as much without practically removing the plot, but they still need to correlate with what is given to the viewer at any point, uh, and what is most important to the creators which is probably one of the reasons why we got a completely plotless last two episodes with only what we need to know straight up in your face, besides the fact that they ran out of budget, but that doesn't matter how, we'll skip over that. So we have well-developed themes in a tight plot and a complex plot with themes thrown in for specific character beats. Fully Cooly is different, as I have made very clearly, uh, so how does it pull off having pretty by-the-books themes and a short, hard-to-follow plot that doesn't make the most amount of sense. It's with its style. Of course, I've talked about the unique style in each of these segments, but with Fully Cooly, the appeal and enjoyment of the show doesn't depend on one of those factors as much, uh, because even though it really shouldn't be my thing, this series, in my opinion, encapsulates what Gainax is all about more than any other. While Ava has themes that are more relevant for the creators, and Gurren has more climactic, and relevant underdog story for what the studio's swan song could be, as well as being directed by the creator of Trigger. Fully Cooly takes all creative liberties possible, and this results in a much more personalized experience. The shot with Never Knows Best was implemented just because it sorta looked cool. Sometimes Canty is red, and sometimes he's blue. Hell, the creators didn't even intend on the series being as popular as was, so of course they didn't take it seriously. Canty literally comes out of a dick joke. And stuff like this is also why the plot being more interpretation-based is a lot more satisfying than Ava, for me at least. Sometimes it's technically beautiful sakuga, other times it's weirdly lively manga panels, and sometimes it's South Park. Everything feels like a cartoon in the best way possible, and none of this muddles the themes that still can hit really hard, partly because I'm baby, uwu, but also because there's enough focus on the aesthetic and vibe that that's basically how they show the themes, like what I was talking about with Gurren Lagann, but to a way more extreme point, and of course they still have an interesting plot that can be dissected and figured out and have all of the themes in it, so that's still there for, you know, if you do like analyzing plot, just like, you know, both of those series, wow, that's really cool. Also, it has the single best OST in anime. Ever. Not like my personal favorite, it's the best. The pillows are a godsend and should be worshipped for as long as historical proof of them exists and beyond that. It's seriously a miracle that the series is a success, and uh, so is Gainax, I guess. With a studio that was born from students making a short that had a big ass fighting robot and referenced everything they loved, it's only natural that they create series to inspire others. 
which is one of the biggest parts of why people loved Gurren Lagann. I feel like a lot of the people who make videos on Gainax are way more pessimistic and bittersweet than what I feel like Gainax really deserves. Of course, I'm not the first person to make this joke, but Gainax really did have a bit of a Gainax ending itself, uh, abruptly and slightly unsatisfying, but I feel like it had to end at some point so that we could get things like Kill la Kill or Pro Mare. It's not like we'll just never get to experience any of this again. It's been so influential for the anime industry, the anime community, what there is in the future and what there is now. So uh, how about we cherish what we do have? Because as close as it may seem, there'll never be another production by them. And uh, I guess that's part of the magic of Gainax.